Mr. Wu, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a very great uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, at, a, at an important occasion, uh, Mr. Wu's speech just now reminded us of the long and distinguished uh, history of China in publishing, uh, much longer, of course, than the European history in publishing, uh, and also of the importance of publishing in the whole process of economic and social and human development. Uh, what I want to do is spend a few minutes reflecting on the enormous change uh, that has swept through China and has, in particular, uh, created enormous opportunities for uh, uh, the English language as much as anything, and certainly published uh, publications and cooperation between the two countries. About three years ago, the British Council published a piece of research which caused quite a stir, because it suggested that in a short period of time, the number of English speakers in China would outstrip those in India. Well, the debate has moved on since then. Uh, now the issue is whether China will soon have the highest number of English speakers in the whole world, uh, a point that was made by the former US ambassador last year, uh, John Huntsman. Whatever the exact figures, uh, and I gather that the academic community now estimates that there are at least 300 million people in China learning English, uh, the message is clear to us all, and that is that there is huge potential for collaboration and communication, and indeed, of course, a huge necessity for collaboration and communication in this all-important sphere. What I want to do is talk briefly about how this challenge is being met in the book industry and also touch on how uh, we're working to establish deeper cultural exchanges in this Britain's Olympic year, which also, of course, marks the 40th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties between the UK and the People's Republic. And I'd, look to look at, I'd like to look at how people are working in the publishing industry can go about winning more business and cooperation opportunities in China. When it comes to books, uh, the Chinese market has, of course, been performing very strongly for UK publishers in recent years. J.K. Rowling's famous Harry Potter series, published by Bloomsbury, has sold more than 180,000 copies in English and millions and millions in Chinese. On the day of its launch in China, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows sold 2,000 copies in one bookshop in Beijing alone. Lewis Alexander's New Concept English, an English language textbook published by Pearson, has sold more than 4 million copies in China. And HarperCollins' exports of books to mainland China have gone up by 1,500% in the last five years. Overall, UK book sales to China have risen at an average of over 15% over the last three years, uh, more than three times the international average of 4.5%. And these statistics just represent the tip of an iceberg. Most of the trading, of course, is through rights licensing, uh, where the figures are rather more difficult to track. Many UK bestsellers become bestsellers in China in their translated editions published by Chinese publishers. Content licensing uh, will become ever more important as digital publishing becomes a greater and greater part of the mix. And a particular opportunity, obviously, lies in education. The UK is ahead of the pack in Europe when it comes to digitalising materials in our schools and is also an early and rapid adopter of e-books. Going the other way, there are opportunities for Chinese publishing firms uh, interested in investing in the UK market. Uh, we're aware that the Chinese publishing industry has gone through a period of major reform and significant growth, and that the creation of the supergroups is making significant new funding available for investment, as Mr Wu has just explained. What the UK can offer is a well-established trading infrastructure, one of the world's leading creative and digital industry environments, well-established copyright protection, and an economy which is both tax-efficient and relatively free of regulation. In this, London's Olympics year, we're seeing a huge surge in cultural cooperation between the UK and China, uh, which has hosted, of course, the enormously successful last Olympic Games in Beijing. This week, Cultural Secretary Jeremy Hunt and Chinese State Councilor Liu Liangdong launched a new cultural dialogue between the UK and China. These high-level talks will provide an opportunity to develop closer ties in culture, the creative industries, science and education, all critical areas of uh, human interaction and all relevant to publishing.
uh, next week, I'll be at number 10 Downing Street for a reception to launch UK Now, which will be the largest festival of British arts and creative industries ever held in China. And it follows on from a festival of Ch called China Now in 2008 in London, or in Britain I should say, which was the same thing in reverse. Running until November, UK Now will bring hundreds of events to Chinese cities. It's being organised by the British Council in cooperation with the Chinese government, with projects drawn from across the country. There will be exhibitions throughout China, from the British Museum and the Victoria and Albert. Other exhibitions from well-known figures, such as architect Richard Rogers and the Turner Prize winning sculptor Tony Cragg. A selection of critics' favourites from the Edinburgh Festival, tours by the English National Ballet and performances by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra and young British bands. And what I'm particularly pleased about is that this is not just going to the major centres, this isn't just Beijing and Shanghai, it's taking 17 cities in China in all, covering a whole range of cities, including some smaller ones, although uh, small is always a relative term in China, when you think that Tianjin uh, is a city with a population of 11 million, making it the same size as Belgium and rather bigger than uh, Sweden, Austria, Hungary or Ireland. As this, all this activity is going on in China, the UK will be celebrating its cultural Olympiad with events around the country, a number of which will be looking at our historical and cultural ties with China. And during the Olympics themselves, UK Trade and Investment, that's the Government Trade Promotion, Trade and Investment Promotion Body, will be hold, hosting the British Business Embassy at Lancaster House here in London, which will feature both China and the UK's creative industries, with some world-famous writers lined up amongst those who will be speaking at the various events. This high-level of activity is a great background against which to cooperate, and it underlines the opportunity. It underlines the opportunity in both directions. For Chinese publishers looking to go global, there's an opportunity in this country. And for the UK looking at opportunities in China, well, they are, of course, immense. How do we go about it? Well, the UK has a good starting position. Our public in publication, publishing industry is already the most successful exporter of its kind in the world. Export sales account for 40% of total UK publisher sales. And this figure arises to around 70% if you're looking at academic publishers. If a publisher is not already exporting, then of course getting started can indeed seem rather daunting. Where do you start? How do you go about it? And certainly, let's face it, starting with China can seem more daunting than uh, going across the channel. But there's help at hand. UK Trade and Investment, working with the China British Business Council, has trade advisors throughout this country who can link you up with a whole network of support throughout a whole number of Chinese cities. UKTI is also working with the Publishers Association, offering assistance to firms that want to attend the Beijing International Book Fair at the end of the summer. We have the ability to research the market, uh, find the people you need to speak to, and can help with strategies to deal with issues such as copyright and intellectual property protection. Uh, finally, there's a new development in that UK Export Finance, the formerly known ECGD, uh, can now offer insurance against the risk of non-payment on overseas contracts and can help with working capital to finance large orders. All of this has been put in place to help the process of engagement, to help the process of developing this uh, important, strategically significant cooperation between Chinese publishing and British publishing. I spoke earlier about the potential for collaboration and communication, uh, and I hope that uh, you'll recognise that this is shameless plagiarism from the poster uh, that advertised this event. Some of the other slogans you'll have seen uh, talk about vitality, inspiration, creativity and innovation. All of these characterise the opportunity that exists. British firms are already doing well in China, but there's a plenty of potential for the cooperation to go much further. And speaking personally, as somebody who's spent uh, a lot of time in China, has lived for a long time in Hong Kong, I look forward to seeing many more Chinese authors published here in the future. I'm very much looking forward to looking around the fair, uh, and I wish uh, you all here this morning a very successful event. Thank you for listening.